Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A-A-C-A-L-A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. Some of you who are listening to this podcast may also attend to some of the uploads that I post on my Akala Akala YouTube channel. And if you are listening to some of the recent uploads, you know that I am uploading sections on an unabridged basis of the Shurangama Sutra, which I believe in Chinese they refer to as the Shurangama Sutra, and is highly revered in China. And a friend of mine who's quite knowledgeable about Chinese brought to my attention one section of the sutra that correlates with Pure Land Buddhism and is actually one key doctrinal source for Chinese Pure Land Buddhists, in addition, of course, to the to the three Sukhavati, or Pure Land Sutras. And this particular section of the Surangama is just a page long, and it's in the context of various sages basically indicating to the Buddha which sort of modality that they find most helpful in achieving the so-called patient endurance of the uncreate. And just as a sidebar, I really have honed in on this phrase in various forms as being a way to encapsulate in a nutshell the essence of enlightenment. Again, the phrase is the patient endurance of the uncreate. And the way I ordinarily would be thinking about it is the patient acceptance of all things as unborn. But again, I don't want to necessarily go there right now. I want to stick with this section of the Surangama that focuses on a bodhisattva called Mahasthama. Now, actually, I think his name in a more formal sense is perhaps Mahasthama Prompta. And what makes him significant is that when we look at the iconography, in other words, looking at like paintings of Amida Buddha, we see, as are many Buddhas or most Buddhas, that Amida is flanked by two bodhisattvas. On the one side is Kuan Yin or Avalokiteshvara, who, as many of you know, is the bodhisattva who represents infinite compassion. And again, typically when a, when a Buddha is flanked by these two bodhisattvas, one represents compassion and the other represents wisdom. So my assumption is that Mahasthama Prompta represents wisdom. But in any case, he shows up here in this Surangama Sutra, and he is considered to be, so to speak, a son of the Dharma king. In other words, uh, a, a key bodhisattva. In fact, he's the head of a group of 52 bodhisattvas. As the Buddha is asking these various sages about what they consider to be the best means of perfection, the best means of achieving a sort of samadhi or enlightened state of mind, he references repeating the name of Amida Buddha as the key methodology. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go ahead and recite this page. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the recitation again with a female voice, specifically the voice of my significant other. And that way you'll have sort of two different uh, tonalities, if you will, for this as you as you listen to it. And remember when you're listening to it also that this is not Jodo Shinshu. This is not true Pure Land Buddhism. This is an earlier form of Pure Land Buddhism that this is making reference to, where, again, it's not a matter of just simply one recitation of the Nambutsu with, a, with an entrusting mind, but it's more an emphasis on repeated repetition of the name. But still, in the context of this podcast on exploring Pure Land Buddhism, I think it has great meaning and hopefully will be appreciated by some of you listening. So here we go. Mahasthama, a son of the Dharma king, who was the head of a group of 52 bodhisattvas, rose from his seat, prostrated himself with his head at the feet of the Buddha, and declared, I still remember that in the remotest of eons, countless as the sands of the Ganges, there was a Buddha called Amitabha, who was succeeded by eleven other Tathagatas in that Kalpa. 
The last one was called the Buddha whose light surpassed that of the sun and the moon. He taught me how to realize the state of samadhi by thinking exclusively of Amitabha Buddha. By way of illustration, if a person concentrates his mind on someone else while the latter always forgets him, both may meet and see, but without recognizing each other. However, if both are keen on thinking of each other, their keenness will grow from one incarnation to another until they become inseparable like a body and its shadow. The Tathagatas in the Ten Directions have compassion for all living beings and always think of them like a mother who never ceases thinking of her son. If the son runs away, her thoughts of him will not help. But if he also thinks of her with the same keenness, they will not be separated in spite of the passing of transmigrations. If a living being remembers and thinks of the Buddha, he is bound to behold him in his present or future incarnation. He will not be far from the Buddha, and thus, without the aid of any other expedient, his mind will be opened. He is like a man whose body, perfumed by incense, gives out fragrance. Hence, his name, one glorified by Buddha's fragrance and light. From my fundamental cause ground, and with all my thoughts concentrated on the Buddha, I achieved the patient endurance of the uncreate. This is why I help all living beings of this world to control their thoughts by repeating the Buddha's name so that they can reach the pure land. As the Buddha now asks about the best means of perfection, I hold that nothing can surpass the perfect control of the six senses with continuous pure thoughts in order to realize samadhi. So the goal here is the control of the senses. The method, though, is an easy path type method, namely repeating the Buddha's name. And of course, he refers to Amitabha, which is the Buddha of infinite light. And light, I believe, always really represents wisdom, which is prajna or sunyata. So with those comments, we'll transition here, and you can hear Charlotte reciting the same section if you wish to hear this with a female voice. And after that, I'll just simply sign off. Namo Mita Boots. I still remember that in the remotest of eons, countless as the sands of the Ganges, there was a Buddha called Amitabha, who was succeeded by eleven other Tathagatas in that Kalpa. The last one was called the Buddha whose light surpassed that of the sun and moon. He taught me how to realize the state of Samadhi by thinking exclusively of Amitabha Buddha. By way of illustration, if a man concentrates his mind on someone else, while the latter always forgets him, both may meet and see, but without recognizing each other. However, if both are keen on thinking of each other, their keenness will grow from one incarnation to another until they become inseparable like a body and its shadow. The Tathagatas in the Ten Directions have compassion for all living beings and always think of them, like a mother who never ceases thinking of her son. If the son runs away, her thoughts of him will not help. But if he also thinks of her with the same keenness, they will not be separated in spite of the passing of transmigrations. If a living being remembers and thinks of the Buddha, he is bound to behold him in his present or future incarnation. He will not be far from the Buddha, and thus, without the aid of any other expedient, his mind will be opened. He is like a man whose body, perfumed by incense, gives out fragrance. Hence his name, one glorified by Buddha's fragrance and light. From my fundamental cause ground, and with all my thoughts concentrated on the Buddha, I achieved the patient endurance of the uncreate. This is why I help all living beings of this world 
to control their thoughts by repeating the Buddha's name so that they can reach the pure land. As the Buddha now asks about the best means of perfection, I hold that nothing can surpass the perfect control of the six senses with continuous pure thoughts in order to realize samadhi. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amida Buddha, never, never to be abandoned. Namo Amida Boots. Namo Amida Boots. Namo Amida Boots. Thank you.